In this lecture, I'm going to cover the introduction to swaps. So what are swaps and how are they used? Swaps are agreements to exchange a series of payments. So there are various types of swaps, but in essence, they are agreements to exchange a series of payments. Now these payments are made periodically on settlement days. This is done over a certain period of time and swaps are net settled. So there's no actual trans, uh, you know, transfer of underlying. It's just they are net settled. That is on the settlement date, just one of the participants becomes liable to pay the other. They are OTC contracts and we already know what OTC contracts are. They are, that is over the counter contracts subject to counterparty risk of default. Now the duration of a swap is known as the tenor and the contract ends on the termination date. Now, these can be created with the help of swap facilitators. So they act like matchmakers in finding people who want one series of payment in exchange for another which they have to make currently. And we we'll look into their function uh, soon in this lecture. Now they can alternatively be issued by large dealers or large banks or brokerage firms etc. And now how are they used? Now they can either be used as currency swaps or interest rate swaps or equity swaps. Now the focus on level one are interest rate swaps and particularly plain vanilla interest rate swaps. So now let's look at the features of swaps and how are they similar with forwards. First of all, swaps require no payment by either party at initiation. And we know that in case of forwards, it's pretty similar too. But that's not the case in futures as we've seen. Futures require margin calls for the uh, clearing house to obtain protection from. So, But swaps, since they're over-the-counter instruments, the burden of uh, default risk are on, bo on both the counterparties. Next, they are custom instruments. So we already covered that, but it's just reiterating the fact that it's a, they, are custom, they, they are customizable. So it, it, depending upon your requirements, you can create the swap. They are unregulated largely as uh, they're not, you know, run on any exchange as such. Default risk again is uh, something which is very peculiar with uh, swaps and also is something which is similar with forwards. They are done by large institutions. All right. So generally speaking, you wouldn't expect uh, an ordinary person to go and do a swap because uh, the whole objective is to ensure that you cover a, a long standing series of payments in, in a manner which is beneficial to you. Now, why wouldn't a smaller player be able to do that? Probably just avoid the hassles involved because uh, the swaps are actually some of the most complicated derivatives that uh, are there are present. So just for the sake of complexity and uh, the fact that large institutions take strategic positions, it is mostly done by large institutions. Not that they are not that smaller players are barred from doing it, but it's mostly done by large institutions. Now let's look at plain vanilla interest rate swap through an example. So Mr. A currently has a fixed interest bearing payable on a notional principal amount while another has a floating interest payable that is Mr. B on the same notional principal payment. So I've mentioned quite a few things over here. There are two parties involved. One party has a certain interest payable and, he want, uh, and uh, the other party has a different type of interest payable. And there's something which is mentioned here as notional principle. So what is notional? What do you understand of notional? Notional means something which replaces what is real. So it is like a placeholder. It does not have any uh, real value, but it is treated as something as real so that uh, a transaction can be conducted accordingly. All right. So now let's take this further. Mr. A wants to pay floating and receive fixed no why would he want to do that because he's currently having a fixed interest payable on a particular loan so what he wants is he's he's worried that uh, he's going to lose out because he he believes that the interest rate is going to go down and if the interest rate goes goes down compared to the to the floating rate he's actually going to be at a loss so to cover himself he wishes to enter into a swap so that he gets to pay lower as per his understanding through floating rate now 
Mr. B, on the other hand, believes the, uh, you know, he already has a floating paper and he's worried about the floating rate to go up. And in which case, he wants to receive floating and pay fixed instead. So now Mr. A and Mr. B are just two people. They may or may not know each other. And thus it becomes really difficult. And as, as two people, we, we consider them as maybe high net worth individuals because it's mostly large institutions or larger players who, who enter into such transactions. So now they find each other, let's say, through the help of a matchmaker or, or an intermediary known as a swap facilitator. Now the job of the swap facilitator would be then to create the swap for Mr. A and Mr. B so they can transact accordingly on a periodical basis. So that's the function of a swap facilitator. And if they approach a bank, they can enter into a swap with a bank directly, in which case Mr. A would not have to meet Mr. B, that he can directly go to a bank and Mr. B can go to another bank and gets done. There are various other complicated versions of swaps, but we'll not really get into that because uh, that will be taken care of mostly in level two. All right, so for now, Mr. B being the person to pay the fixed rate has the pay fixed side of the contract. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now, Mr. A, however, wanting to pay floating and receive fixed has the pay floating side. In this case, Mr. A is also referred to as the floating rate payer. Well, that covers this lecture on the introduction to swaps. Thanks for watching. I will catch you in the next lecture. Bye for now.